The university is essentially a large city. I mean, there's about 18,000 students and 20-some thousand employees and the state's largest medical facility here. And all that is energy intensive. I'm Furman Melster, uh, Principal Engineer in the Office of Sustainability, working on renewable energy. My title is Principal Engineer, Renewables. I came here in 1991 as the power plant manager and was at the power plant for a little more than 16 years uh, as the power plant manager and associate director of utilities, but had the opportunity to come here uh, and work in the Office of Sustainability on our 2020 vision task two, which is 40% renewable energy. And it's, it's quite, a, uh, quite a challenge. Since 2003, we've had a commercial Oatol project with Quaker Oats where we burn biomass and we're able to take those and burn them in one of our boilers and displace coal. And so, you know, now we're working to expand significantly uh, the sources of biomass fuel and we're going to go to both of our boilers with biomass fuel, not just one. We learned that the Johnson County Conservation Board, the people that run Kent Park, had some dead and dying conifers. I answered the phone and said, well, that sounds interesting. These are trees that were planted more than 40 years ago as a conservation measure. Uh, so the Conservation Board desires to do an ecological restoration out there. They want to return that land to what it was before, which is native prairie. But to do that, they have to get rid of these thousands of conifers they had out there. There was no commercial uh, use for those trees. So we said, well, we'd like to investigate using them as biomass fuel. We, the university, contracted with a logging firm out of Dubuque, uh, Bill Miller Logging, and they came in and harvested the timber, made wood chips, and they've taken those to our coal supplier. They receive coal off of barges, and they stockpile it on their facility there on the Mississippi River. And so what River Trading has done is they've received those wood chips that were produced at Kent Park. They're blending them with our coal and then delivering to us uh, a truckload of blended fuel. And we've learned that we can get about 20% by volume of wood chips to coal and still maintain 25 tons on a truck. It's important to get to that 25 ton number because that's the most economical way to transport it. The process at the plant is each day they'll look ahead to what they plan to do for tomorrow. They'll look at their silo levels. And so they look at where their inventory is today and what they anticipate they'll need tomorrow or looking ahead through a weekend. And they'll order so many trucks. Uh, typically, we would get five to ten trucks a day for the boiler that's burning the wood chips. And then they come in, uh, they're placed in the silo, and out of the silo, the material uh, flows through the systems and into the boiler. The main power plant is the major source of steam production. At the power plant, there are two large, I'm going to call them solid fuel boilers. Uh, they were designed for coal. Coal's their base fuel, still is today but they have the capability to be adapted to solid biomass. And so what we hope to do is gradually transition to more and more and more biomass, displacing more and more coal. Ultimately, we would want to get to 100% biomass or alternate fuels. I think if we're going to be successful in the long term and procure our energy from the local area, we have to engage others and find new and unique partnerships. The heart of that project will be using our existing capital assets, they're paid for, they're in place, uh, to use and increase our, our use of renewable energy.